Section 1.5, displaying quantitative data histograms. Now a histogram is probably the most common graphical display that we'll see in statistics. And what we're doing when we create a histogram is taking our data and separating into a whole bunch of intervals. Okay, those intervals, uh, we're gonna look to see how much of our data falls in that interval and we'll create a bar that represents the number or the frequency, okay, or the percentage, which would be the relative frequency, of values that fall in that inter interval. So if we have this dot plot here, percent of foreign-born residents across uh, all 50 states in the United States. Okay, we can see we're separating them in intervals of five percentage blocks. So zero to five, then five to 10, etc. Okay, we count how many dots are in that zero to five interval. Then we do the same thing from five to 10, etc., etc. And then eventually we end up with our histogram. Now, just one note, since this is one of the more confusing things, is the number is starting the next bar. So this first bar starts at zero. It goes up to, but not including five, because five is actually in this bar right here. So it goes up to 4.999999999, et cetera. All right, but if we actually have a state that has 5% foreign born residents, that would go in the second bar. So let's go ahead and make a histogram of that same graph that we just saw using the raw data. So we have our table here showing the percent of foreign born residents in each of the 50 states. It's always fun to note where New Jersey, at, uh, New Jersey is at in a table like this. So we see us down there, 22.8%, uh, which is one of the higher values. And to make a histogram, we're gonna go through these four steps here. So to start, we have to choose our intervals. After that, we're gonna make a frequency table, which we talked about earlier in the chapter. Draw a label and scale the axes, and then lastly, draw the bars. So to make our intervals, we're gonna note the maximum and the minimum. So when we look at our data here, uh, the minimum looks like it would be West Virginia here. And then the maximum, um, 26.9 California okay so we're gonna find the range by subtracting those and then this is how many bars we want to have in our histogram and that's just chosen arbitrarily it doesn't have to be six we could have chosen five we could have chosen seven we could have chosen whatever we want all right so we find the range we divide by how many bars we want our graph to have we get this value right here all right, and then we're gonna change this to an interval and we always wanna round it up. So it doesn't matter if it's 4.00001, we're still gonna round it up to five. And in fact, if it was four exactly, we're, we're even gonna round that up to five as well. So whatever we have, we're rounding it up to the next number. Our interval width for this graph will be five. Now we wanna make our frequency table. So we're gonna start with our classes, all right? Our interval width or our class width uh, is five. So a class is just like the, the width of the bar. All right. And when we put in our class width here, we add it vertically. All right. So we're just going to start at zero because it's easiest. All right. But we'd want to start at anything that's going to include our minimum value. So that minimum value is 1.5. We could start this graph at 1.5 if we wanted, but it's just simpler to put it at zero. When we move to the next class, we add five and we put that number down here, okay? So the five is adding this way, not this way, all right? Because remember, this first bar doesn't go from zero up to five. It goes uh, up to not including five. Five is in the next bar there, in that second bar. So it's everything from zero to 4.99999, et cetera. Okay, so now we have all of our classes. Each of these is a class they're just our bars or our boundaries. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna count up how many we have. So 3.3, we'd put a tally mark in here. Okay, 8.2, we'd put a tally mark in here, et cetera, et cetera. Keep going until we add them all up. Now we have our frequency table. And once we have the histogram, we're gonna use it to draw a label and scale the axes of our histogram. So we have our frequency, which is the number of states in a bar uh, on the left there. On the right, it's the percent of foreign born residents. So our first bar is gonna go from zero to five. Okay, we can see that interval right there. Then the next one goes from five to 10, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, 
as always with our graphs, make sure that the spacing on these axes is spaced out equally. Make sure the y-axis is small enough. Okay, it should pretty much always start at zero and we want it to go high enough to fit the maximum value. And then our last step is just to draw the bars. So in this first bar, we have 14. Okay, in the next bar, we have 19. Okay, on and on. All right, and we have our histogram. Just uh, keep, keep in mind the area rule. We want these bars to be about the same width, right? So the height is telling us the proportion of the data that falls in that data set or in that bar. Now to answer a couple questions based on this histogram, what percent of states have less than 10% foreign born residents? Remember that 10% is falling in this bar right here. So everything in the first two bars is less than 10%. So we had 14 here. We have 19 here. Okay, we're gonna add those together. We get 20, uh, 33, and that's out of the 50 states. So 66% have less than 10%. Shape of the distribution. Hopefully we're starting to get the hang of this. That would be skewed to the right, okay? Because the tail is on the right. Estimating the center and the spread. Okay, spread, we're still using range. So it goes from zero to 30. Note that it's not actually 30. It's gonna be just under 30 because 30 would fall in this next bar over here and there's nothing in that next bar. All right, and the center, um, we could figure out where the median falls, right? There's 50 values in here. So the 25th value, we know there's 14 here. It's gonna pass the middle somewhere in this range. The 25th value will be like in the middle of this bar. So I'm just gonna pick something um, in the middle of that five to 10 range, I said 8%. And lastly, comparing distributions using histograms. Uh, in this data set here, we have personal income for individuals who either, yes, graduated college or no, did gra I'm sorry, graduated high school or no, did not graduate high school. And it's always helpful when we have the same scale. So on the bottom here, you see it goes from zero to 160. And that's the same scale as we would use up here. They just, there's no reason to write it twice. So anytime we compare quantitative data, we wanna go through all four elements of SOX, shape, outlier, center, spread. Uh, we wanna use comparative language. So we wanna say like, this is larger than the other, this one's smaller than the other. Note what's the same, note what's different. So in my example here, uh, I'm gonna start off with what's the same. The distribution of incomes for those who did and did not graduate high school are both unimodal. Unimodal means we have one peak, okay? And the peak is right on the left there and skewed to the right, okay? Both of these have a tail on the right side. There's much more variability in those who did graduate high school compared to those who did not. So this distribution is a lot more spread out. And I note the ranges here. Range was about 150,000 versus 50,000. There are many high outliers in the distribution of high school graduates, but none in those that did not graduate. And generally speaking, high school graduates earn more with a median of around 20,000 than non-graduates median around 10,000. And we can figure that out just by looking at the graph here because the median is the 50th percentile. Okay, it's right in the middle of the, the, the data. So median for that top graph is in that first bar. All right, so it's on the top part of that first bar. So it's gonna probably be uh, close to that 10,000 top of that first bar. All right, median in the second graph, so there's 30% in this bar, and then another 20% in the second bar. So like right at the top here, or maybe in the bottom of this one, depending on if that actually hits 20% there, that's where our median's gonna be. So it's gonna be somewhere right around that 20,000 mark.